Here from California, Alex Padilla joining us now in your Dodger jersey. I, I appreciate that you understood the assignment. Senator, good morning. Uh, good morning, Alex, <laughs> and uh, can't wait to get the replacement jersey once uh, these are available. So, uh, huge World Series, yeah. well, Yankees, and honoring Fernando. Big day. It is a big day, and, and I know there's all the divisive politics stuff, and we're not getting into that today. Let's just talk about what unifies the city. And for you, as a kid, growing up in San Fernando, playing baseball, and looking at El Toro, what did Fernando Valenzuela mean to you? Oh, my gosh. I mean, uh, to, to fully understand, you got to kind of mentally transport yourself back to what life was like back in the... Uh, around 1980, 1981. And I just started playing Little League Baseball in 1980. My mom gave me a choice, you know, aside from school, you're gonna be an ultra boy, you wanna play baseball. It was an easy decision for me, uh, but without too many role models or people to look up to. Boom, here comes Fernando. Here comes Fernando Mania, and to uh, see a, uh, a Mexican from very humble, uh, very poor uh, origins, from roots, uh, come to Los Angeles and excel uh, on some of the biggest stages you can imagine and be celebrated by everybody. It gave the Latino community just so much pride, particularly young Latinos, particularly young Latino baseball players. It just so happened that I was trying to become a pitcher. Never mastered the screwball. You know, mine was a split finger. But uh, <laughs> I think Fernando's success just represented so much of the demographic shift, uh, the fight for uh, representation and respect. And just the way he played, I think, is uh, uh, representative of how uh, the Latino community is, in my opinion. He always worked hard, gave it his best. He's best known for his pitching, but he was a good batter. I remember an extra inning, sometimes yeah. he'd be deployed into the outfield uh, or as a pinch hitter. Uh, he did whatever it took to help his team win, never complained, always played with joy. A silver slugger. And, and I remember the last time that the Dodgers won the World Series back in 2020, I was out here with you right afterwards. It was you, <laughs> Governor Newsom. Uh, Fernando Valenzuela and me as the pool reporter, it was the height of the pandemic. And to see both of you, two of the most powerful people in the state, fangirling over Fernando <laughs> was quite something. <laughs> Can you talk about what you remember from that day and from what Fernando taught you? The, well, a couple of things. Number one, anybody who had the great uh, opportunity to meet him was usually surprised at how humble he was, how reserved of a personality he was. I mean, I think his stardom uh, was, he was very well aware of that, but he made it a point to try to be low key, to not take attention away from you know, the current players or whatever else was happening that particular day. Uh, I also recognize that day as, you know, Fernando being a star both on and off the field. It, it's uh, years earlier. He became a United States citizen. Uh, wasn't with a lot of fanfare at the moment, but he uh, shared that uh, naturalization with others, hoping to inspire eligible people to begin the naturalization process and become U.S. citizens. The day we were together, we were promoting voting, uh, Dodger Stadium as a vote center. And with all due respect to the governor, I know he's a Giants fan. I'm a Dodger fan, so uh, I outranked him at least that day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, now, you, you talked about yourself as a pitcher. Uh, we Some people may not know this, but in the congressional baseball game, you were the pitcher. So let's take a look at that. Uh-oh. This is Padilla's first game here. California Senator. And Padilla trying to find the strike zone. Look at that guy. So clearly you are a baseball expert. So give us your breakdown of the series, what you're looking for, and do you have any bets with the New York Senators? Uh, those bets are being finalized today. There may or may not be some Langer's pastrami on the line here, but uh, okay. uh, what I can this, you know, two historic franchises. It's going to be a great series. I think it's going long. Maybe all seven, maybe Dodgers can wrap it up in six, but it will be Dodgers bringing home the hardware. Uh, and, and I checked some data points this morning just to make sure I can back it up. The last time the Dodgers and the Yankees played each other, the last 60 games, they've each won 30. The last 30 times they faced each other, they each won 15. The last 10 times they've played each other, they've each won five. So it's a very competitive matchup. You know, all stars on both sides. 
but I think that the Dodgers are just a little bit deeper, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna win this thing. Well, I appreciate you bringing the stats this morning, uh, Senator Padilla. We hope it goes six or seven because then we get to win it here at Dodger Stadium. We hope oh, you'll right. be out here for that. We want to sell in front of the best fans in all of baseball. Yeah, we hope we'll see you out here for that. Senator, thanks so much for joining us this morning and sharing your perspective. All right, thank you, everybody. Go Dodgers. Go Dodgers. <laughs> so you can tell he's just a, one of the many people here that just have such a deep connection and also a reminder of how much Fernando Valenzuela inspired so many people, including our United States Senator. How much he mentioned the community and demographics all yes. walks of life. Thank, thank you, Alex. Alex. Thanks mm -hmm. for bringing that to us this morning.